Hi, this is Lola Lace. This is my second uh, video blog, and it's for my latest release, La Femme Salida. Okay, question number one, where did I get the idea for Salida? The idea came from Victoria's Secret model Salida Ebanks. I watch a Kevin Hart show, The Real Husbands of Hollywood, and Salida Ebanks is, a, is on that show. And I remember thinking I would like to write a book for her. And so um, it's easier when you have a clear picture of who the uh, people in the book are going to be. Was Salita adopted for the sole purpose of becoming an assassin? No, not at all. Uh, Salita, she, um, she was adopted by the dragon to be a prostitute because the dragon is a criminal. And so he, of course, he has a prostitution ring and he was going to groom her at a young age to be a prostitute. But when he adopted her, she, he realized that she was really smart. So instead of that, he decided to nurture her intelligence and, you know, send her to school, put her in the best schools and um, pretty much just make her his real daughter. How did I come up with the idea for a female assassin? I happen to like those uh, kinds of movies. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Columbiana, I've seen like so many times, uh, Point of No Return, uh, La Femme Nikita, the French version. So any movie with a woman who knows how to fight and can handle weapons, I like. So it was, you know, inevitable. Is Ben's wife, Margot, going to give him up that easy? Um, at this point, she really doesn't have any choice. You know, she came into the marriage under false pretenses and Ben found out. So she doesn't have a choice. They're already divorced now. It's not too much that she can do. Um, will Margot cause more trouble for Ben and Salita in the next book. I highly doubt it because um, I don't have anything like that in my outline, but the outline changes, the story changes, anything's possible, but I doubt Margot will play a major role in the next book, but I will introduce a new character who will be major in the book, so... Uh, the deal with Enrico, um, he's the middle child. He's the most star for attention from Conrad, their father. He's not the smartest like Ben, and he wasn't the you know best looking like uh, Julio, who was um, a movie star. So you know he needs a lot of attention, and he's really jealous of Ben now. Um, so that's pretty much it with him. Um, he wants to be number one with the father, and currently Ben has taken over that role. I, I fell asleep after I was watching Orange is the New Black, and um, writing this book didn't come easy. It was just that when I was watching Orange is the New Black, um, the writing is so good on that show you get inspired and that's kind of what happened to me. I'm like, oh, that writing is so good. I need to write something. So even though it has absolutely nothing to do with that, um, it inspired me to write and made it um, a little bit easier because I knew who the characters were in my mind. Um, and what I basically, it didn't come easy, but I just wanted to make sure that Salita had this hard exterior, but inside she still had a heart. So that's why the book starts off with her being so hard because she has something to prove. That's how she grew up. This is all she knows until Ben comes around. Uh, 
Uh, I don't believe Celia um, let him be an alpha. Actually, she was more, um, she was happy with the transformation because, um, you know, everyone can't be her. She understands that she is elite. She's smart. She's deadly. She never thought that he was going to be above her, but she is happy that actually he took steps to learn weapons, fighting skills, things like that. I mean, he, he didn't have to do that. So she's pretty much impressed by his transformation. But, um, you know, she didn't really view him as weak because almost everyone is weak compared to her. She's trained to do what she does. Uh, Frank told Ben about Evan because uh, he is Salita's bodyguard and he cares about her. He views her like a sister. He knows the dragon would have uh, made her resume her position and put her in dangerous situations and now she's a mother. And so because, you know, he's protective of her, he is her bodyguard. I mean, if she is out of harm's way, that makes his job easier. But he actually cares about her and Evan. And she he knows that she's in love with Ben. And, of course, Ben was still in love with her. He got to see that firsthand when he met him um, at that coffee shop and in the park. So um, he pretty much just wanted to make sure that she was safe and Evan safe and with Ben he felt that that is exactly what would happen. Sam is so much older than Evan um, but in the next book surely um, Sam will have a prominent relationship with Salida something we didn't see in the first book but uh, you know Salida is his stepmother so I will definitely have a relationship with Salida and Sam in book two. Oh, what Salida did in her time away from Ben, uh, because the dragon is a criminal <clears throat> and Salida, I mean, is a lawyer. She has a Harvard Law degree. You know, she has to tend to his legal matters, um, mostly his legitimate businesses. But of course, you know, he probably needs uh, consultation on his criminal activities also. Um, Juanita, the housekeeper, was not anyone in particular. Um, the name Juanita actually is the actress Juanita Moore who played Sarah Jane's mother in the movie Imitation of Life. So in the back of my mind, I probably was thinking that, but I didn't actually realize that I named her after the same woman in the woman in that movie. Um, Salita and Ben's relationship has had its ups and downs. So... I love cliffhangers. Everyone knows this. So I needed something like an ultimate obstacle to end the book with because um, the book started out, I wanted 30,000 words and went to 40,000 words and ended up at uh, 57 plus words, 57,000 plus words. So that's not what I had in mind. But the book just went in a whole nother direction and it just evolved into something else. So for the end, I wanted something really, really um, different to happen. So um, I felt like what was one of the, the, the biggest obstacle, what could happen to just, you know, um, end this book? Because, I mean, it would go on forever. I have to end them. So um, it was a standalone originally, but it just went and went everywhere. So I had more questions, so many unanswered questions at the end of the book that I was like, this can't be a standalone. I have to write another book. It's been being set up um, for the death of Salida's father. I don't know. I am only 4,000 words into the book, the next uh, Salita book, so I don't know exactly what direction the book is going to go in.
no, there will only be two books. That's it for me with this story. What's next for me? I am writing a vampire trilogy that is adapted from some teleplays I wrote years ago. They will be interracial paranormal romance. And um, that is exactly why uh, I used to write screenplays and teleplays, which is movies and TV scripts. And that is why my books have so much dialogue and not that much description. I'm working on putting more description into my books. And that's why La Femme Salida, the beginning is just talking backwards and forwards. It's just a lot of conversation because that's where I come from, dialogue. You're not supposed to give uh, actors too much description because they're an actor and you have to let them move the way they want to move. So that's exactly why my books have so much dialogue. Next, um, after the Vampire Trilogy, of course, I'm going to do um, the sequel to La Femme Salida. And after that, I also have a murder mystery that I'm working on. I'm like 10,000 words into a murder mystery. It's in a racial romance also. I will do a RJ book next year. I don't have a title, but RJ will have another book. And also, I have been doing a little research to make uh, another Balls to the Walls book about Jack Unger because um, if you read Balls to the Walls, you know that Jack didn't end up with anybody. He's by himself now. And I thought I, I got some ideas that I've been researching in order to make him have his own book. So um, definitely next year, Jack will have a book. I kind of wanted to make him have a little series, but my series run so long and I know a lot of people don't like series I love series and obviously I if you read any of my books you know I like cliffhanger endings I love them so uh, that's what I have going on right now I don't know what will be next because I keep uh, moving around from place to place I got 20,000 words one book 10,000 another book um, basically I'm all over the place and I have to focus on one book to get it finished. That's the same thing I did with uh, Salida. I was working on two other books and it took me a while to put those books to the side but then I was like uh, very intrigued with La Femme Salida and I decided just to stick with that book and that's why it ended up being finished first and coming out first. Um, so yeah, I, um, I'm going to do an RJ book next year. Probably a Jack book and currently that's all that I have right now but Sometimes other things pop up, and I completely neglected uh, Crystal Lake. I would love to write a First Blood novel, but those books take a lot of research because they're uh, time period books. I left off in 1970-something, so um, I would love to do another First Blood novel. And uh, next year, probably, I will get to that also. Um, so thank you for watching. I know this video is pretty long but um I, I tried to answer all the questions as quickly as possible so video blogs are easier so I'm gonna try my best to do more video blogs instead of typing them out because of all the typos um, thanks and I want to thank everybody over in Aunt Sally's uh, romance club and Sally for um, hosting the event Denise Williams Cherry for hosting the event but if you are not a part of that group you probably didn't see the chat in the question so this is for you thanks what's next for me I um <laughs> what's next for me I'm adapting uh <laughs> Stop saying I'm um, so many times. <laughs>